Let's now talk about uh, the topic of frequency response of a multiple degree of freedom uh, system. Uh, we have uh, discussed uh, the derivation uh, a little bit uh, in details. Uh, in this uh, uh, in this part of the lecture, we'll just talk uh, quickly on the derivation and then go through uh, a simple example. For a multiple degree of freedom system, uh, we obtain uh, we try to obtain the frequency response uh, for harmonic uh, excitation. In the case of harmonic excitation, the response should be uh, harmonic also with the same frequency, but the amplitudes are what we will be uh, uh, searching for. Uh, the relation between the input and output in many cases is called uh, uh, the transfer function or the frequency response function. Uh, however, in our case uh, or in our work, we will most of the time call it the dynamic stiffness matrix as we are going uh, to see. Okay. Uh, now, uh, the system of equations uh, should be mass times acceleration plus stiffness times displacement equal force, the same like a single degree freedom system, but in this case, our x's uh, and f's are all uh, vectors. Uh, for harmonic excitation, we will be able to uh, reduce the problem to a dynamic stiffness matrix, KD, multiplied by the amplitude x here, x is the amplitude and f is the amplitude, amplitude of response x and amplitude of excitation uh, f. Uh, if you are in doubt of this, please uh, review uh, the other video in which a little bit more details about the derivation were uh, presented. Now, uh, what you have is a, a transformation of the system. Now you have uh, created a system of algebraic equations from the original system of differential uh, equations. These algebraic equations are simply solvable by inverting the dynamic stiffness matrix and multiplying it by the right-hand side. That's why the dynamic stiffness matrix is called the transfer function. This is what relates the input to the output, in, in which we have the input as the force and the output as the uh, response amplitude. Now let's look at this uh, simple example. Now we have a three degree of freedom system, three masses, M1, M2, and M3, four uh, stiffnesses uh, connected as the sketch shows, and each mass has a force associated with it. So we have F1 here, F2, and F3. Uh, we are going to use some numbers. So the stiffnesses are all of the value 2, uh, say 2 newton per meter, and the masses are 2, 1, and 3, say uh, kilograms. In, in matrix form, we will get the um, uh, relation or the differential equation in uh, this form, mass times acceleration plus stiffness times displacement equals uh, F. Now, uh, what we do is just plug in uh, these, these numbers to obtain the natural frequencies. This is by obtaining the eigenvalues of the system. Here, sorry, this is the eigenvalue, which is omega squared. Then you get the square roots. You get uh, three distinct, uh, distinct natural frequencies. But uh, this is not what we're seeking. We are actually now seeking the uh, frequency response. To get the frequency response, we will write the dynamic stiffness matrix as the stiffness minus omega squared m. I usually write it minus omega squared m plus k, but of course it's the same thing. Anyway, now we have kd with the parameter omega. For each value of omega, what we need to do is re-evaluate the dynamic stiffness matrix. This is constant, this is constant, so all what you need to do is just plug in the omega and get uh, KD. Using that, let's assume that we only have F2. So the force acting on the second mass is there, but there are no forces on F1 or F3. Here, this one indicates that I have uh, uh, an excitation force acting on F2 uh, called, say, 1 times cosine omega t, or uh, in general form, it's 1 times cosine omega t plus i uh, sine omega uh, t. Uh, 
Uh, if you uh, go uh, and write a code, uh, we, I'm going to be explaining this code uh, uh, in the next uh, um, in the next clip. Just for now, this is the response you're going to get. Uh, notice here the, uh, the horizontal axis is the frequency. I'm changing the frequency from zero to four radians per second, and uh, this amplitude is on a logarithmic scale. So actually, uh, these are decibels. Okay, uh, let's just focus on the peaks we're having here. See these three peaks? These are uh, repeated in the three degrees of freedom. Each of these curves, the blue one is for X1, uh, the red one is for X2, and the green one is for X3. Notice that the three of them go to high values at some frequencies. If you compare these frequencies here, the second is around 1.2 and the third is about 2.1. If you compare these to the uh, natural frequencies that we got here, you'll find exactly the same values. So you get maximum response, which is called resonance. You get maximum response when the system is excited with a frequency equal to the natural frequency of the system. Any of the natural frequencies of the system will force the three masses to move at very high amplitudes. Of course, uh, for linear systems that are undamped, these high amplitudes are infinity. If you calculate them, if you try to calculate them, you'll get infinity. But in real life, there is no infinity. There is always nonlinearities and there's always damping that will prevent the system from exploding at these natural uh, frequencies. So uh, this is the note that we've just said. Uh, the second note that we need to observe here is that there are some frequencies at which the system responds at very low amplitude. Okay. Note again, let's go back to the, uh, to the graph here. Uh, look at these here, the first and the third degree of freedom. Here the second and the third degrees of freedom are giving us very, very low amplitudes. Okay, what's going on here? Can we make use of this? This is actually the idea behind uh, what we call the vibration absorber. It's how to select the masses and stiffnesses so that very low responses occur at certain uh, frequencies. 